it's negative 25 in Minnesota and I've got some tips on keeping a diesel air heater running when it's this cold. So uh, I decided, I guess I was gonna wait a full day to finish this video. I meant to do it earlier, but whatever. I figured I'd let it warm up to be about nine below. <laughs> yes, that's what it is right now. Whew. Nine below. Uh, but we've been in, having some problems with the diesel air heater, but I think I've figured some things out and I thought I'd share what I've learned. Uh, and I also wanna know what have you learned? Um, so that's mostly what this video is going to be about. And, uh, if you're watching this because you are in a similar situation, great. Or if you're watching this video because you think it's funny that people live in this kind of climate, uh, I, I'm starting to wonder why myself, but, uh, come along. First off, this is kind of messed up down here because I pulled the diesel air heater all apart. I took it in the garage. I uncovered it and yes, uh, I'm getting very cold right now. Um, but I wanted to show you what, something I've learned and maybe I learned it before, but I forgot. So I'm gonna remind both of us now. And that is that the pump, I found it working better where it actually pumps going down rather than pumping up at an angle because when it pumps down, uh, the air bubbles can travel back into the diesel tank rather than going uh, being pushed forward into the burner, which can cause problems, especially when it's really cold. And we'll talk about those when I get inside because everything about me is about ready to freeze. Oh, so cold, so cold. Ah. Ah. It's amazing how balmy, like 50, oh, 53. Look at this, 53 degrees. 53 degrees in here, not bad. Oh, but actually we're seeing, uh, that's about right. So one of the things I have learned about running a diesel air heater in extremely cold conditions, and I would call this extremely cold, uh, we're going on day eight or nine of this, and I think we've got another five, six to go. It's ridiculous. Um, but what I've learned is you have to keep the burner and the entire heater up to a certain temp. If it gets too cold, it will flame out. At least that's what I've been finding. I don't know if that's what you have found as well, if you're watching this. Um, but I found a way to combat that. As you can tell, it's been running for at least a couple days straight now with what I've learned. And the, the way the controller works by default does not work at these extreme temperatures. It just does not provide enough fuel uh, and it ends up cooling it down too much. Uh, so, let me show you what I found. Anyway, at the stock settings, it will only go to, I think about four and a half pumps per second at a fan speed of 4,500 RPM. And that works fine, you know, probably even down to freezing. That's not bad, that works just fine. Uh, but when it gets colder, the burner just gets too cold uh, with the fan going that fast and only that much fuel going in. So uh, we need to change that. And luckily you have quite a bit of latitude to change certain things on this diesel air heater. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. There are plenty of other videos covering this topic, but I'll show you what I have found. So to go into the super secret menu settings, you click this three times and that gets into the passcode area. So we got to hack our way in here. We're gonna start, uh, you click the up button, and we're gonna go with one. Oh, I did that wrong. You click that button, uh, and now that means that one is locked in there, so then we'll choose, All right, it's six is the next one. Eight is the next one. And then eight is the last one. So it's 1688 is the code most of the time. So uh, this first setting is uh, the pump hertz on the low end, which is 1.4. I dropped that to the lowest. Oh, and I didn't touch anything, so it reverted. <laughs> okay. 
And then the next setting, and we can go through those. So we say, yeah, that one's good. Now the next one is the maximum hertz. And I raise this up to seven. And that has been helpful. I have tried to go to the maximum of eight. Then there's the fan speed. This is the lower threshold of the fan speed at 1500. And you can select each individual number. Uh, there's a maximum. And now this is the maximum fan speed set at 4500, which is stock. It can go up to 5000. Then there's some other settings here. Uh, the voltage. I have that 12 and then the uh, sensor. Uh, and that's the sensor one. I'm leaving it pretty much. I don't mess with any of the other ones. And now it's back. All right. That doesn't like me to talk about the settings. So I'm going to let that just be. Okay, so using the tools I have available in the bus, I'm going to explain to you how those settings translate into actually using the diesel air heater. You're going to love this. Using uh, some crayons, uh, we have a basic line graph here. We have the stock setting in green and what I have it set in blue. So we have fuel going up and fan speed going this way. So. When we are stock, you have at the base about 1.5. Actually, I think stock is a little bit higher. Um, and as the fan speed increases, you go to 4.5 hertz roughly. So that means 4.5 pumps per second are going into the heater as that fan speed increases. So that means anywhere along this line, uh, you can kind of roughly figure out what you're getting at different uh, fueling and fan speed rates. And then at the adjusted setting, that means that's our top. So where this comes into play is somewhere in the middle is you can adjust, um, let's say, so this typical 4.5 is gonna be, uh, what, somewhere right in here. The fan speed is going to be, you know, like two and a half, 3,000 RPM versus 4,500 over here. And that's gonna allow the burner to stay hotter and it continue to burn fuel and not flame out. Uh, I can't, I can't say definitively that this has solved it. Um, like I said, I did not find any real sooting in my burner. I could be dealing with some diesel gelling uh, that has been suggested, and that kind of makes sense to me because diesel, it's not going to, you know, go from a solid or it's not going to go from a liquid into a solid or a gel right away, it's gonna get a little more viscous and then maybe it's gonna move a little bit slower. And even though the pump is pumping as fast as it can, not as much fuel may be getting into it. And so that's why we need to adjust the pump hertz so that we're getting the same amount of fuel that we used to. I don't know exactly. Uh, what I would say is to go into that menu and adjust the fuel and fan settings and just see if you can get a different result. The other thing I would mention, and I cannot necessarily uh, endorse this or recommend it, but it's what I had to do to get this uh, diesel air heater going when it was like 15, 20 below. This is just a matter of practicality. Uh, going with the my life motto of being, I don't care what anything was designed to do, I care what it can do. And this is what this diesel air, diesel air heater can do, okay? Sometimes, uh, it will try and start up. It'll go through the startup sequence and it will flame out. And normally it will go through the shutdown process where the glow plug turns on and it cools it all down safely. That's great. That's exactly what it should do in normal operation. But when that heater is, you know, super cold, you don't want it to cool back down. So what I actually do is I power cycle it. When it shuts off, I power cycle it right away, which means I turn it off, turn it right back on and I hit on. And I don't think that's a problem. And I'll tell you why. The only difference between the shutdown cycle and the startup cycle is the fan speed. Uh, during shutdown, the fan speed is higher, but the glow plug is on. During startup, the glow plug is on and the fan speed is lower, and then it starts pumping. So what we're doing is we're building heat every time we do one of those startup cycles. And I actually had to do this three times. I think I'm just holding up three to get it to start uh, the last time it went out, and that was two days ago, and it's been running fine ever since. Uh, you do wanna be careful, you don't wanna melt, 
it. Oh, uh, one of the other people on YouTube, uh, I forget exactly who. Uh, I'm sure I subscribe to your channel and you might be watching this. So if that's you, if you had your power lost on your diesel air heater and it melted, chime in in the comments. Uh, you're exactly the person I'm talking about and that should be a cautionary tale. And I was thinking about that every time I did this. But in this particular instance, it didn't get all that hot and I got that thing spinning right away. Like literally, it was off and on within a couple of seconds and that's what we had to do to get it working. And sometimes that's what you have to do. That's about all I have there. Uh, I will tease uh, something I'm working on. Uh, that is this little thing here. I'm working on a way to make a little arm that comes out here to be like a little table here to put a laptop or a drink or some food or something. Because we're considering not using the dinette, at least this area being different. So I'm thinking, how are we going to eat? How are we going to eat here or have a laptop, do schoolwork, do whatever? So I made this just as a test. There's a notch back here. And this goes right in there. And it's, well, I can tell it's a little wiggly, but I'm thinking if I can have a piece of wood come off here and then down and then support something like this I might be onto something or I've thought about just um, having something here I've seen some of the TV trays or uh, that's becoming a bigger thing where there's a like a cylinder here and uh, something will kind of snap into it I don't know. What I was thinking I liked about this is it doesn't really screw into anything. It just slides on. And then the arm, basically, I just slide the arm on and then we can store it somewhere else when we don't need to use it. And they could just be normal couches. So, I don't know. That's an idea I'm working on. I'm just, I'd call this just prototyping it. I'm just working on this. And uh, so it's one of the reasons why we try and keep this warm even in the dead of January and February. Um, Got some big plans this summer. Stay tuned for that, that's for sure. Uh, so if you want more of this rambling, unorganized, just uh, taking each problem one at a time mess of a, uh, if you like that kind of content, so definitely subscribe. Give this video a big thumbs up. If you give it a thumbs down, that's cool too. Uh, I'd really love to know why, so I can improve things. Um, you know, if not, there's not much I can do. Uh, so there's that. Anyway, uh, you enjoy uh, whatever you're doing. Go out there and have some fun. Don't be afraid to try things. Catch you guys next time.